Hey guys, welcome back to the 401 on Tech. We're back with the Fire TV Stick 4K Max. Last week we did our review of the streaming stick, so if you're interested in that, the link to the video will be in the description below. But today we're going to show you how to add more storage, sideload apps, and show some game emulation and performance. So we're going to get into it right after this. Okay, so first up, let's add some more storage. It only has about 8 gigabytes of internal storage after the operating system, and you're left with only around like 5 gigabytes. After installing a handful of apps, we were left with only about 2 gigabytes. So what you'll need is an OTG cable like this one. A link for it will be in the description below. A USB thumb drive. We went with the SanDisk 128 gigabytes 3.0 drive. We recommend a USB 3.0 drive at least. They also tend to perform better in USB 2.0 ports and obviously the last thing you will need is the Fire TV stick. First let's plug the USB thumb drive into the USB port of the OTG cable. Then go ahead and unplug the Fire TV stick's micro USB power cable from the streaming stick and plug it into the end of the OTG cable that has the female micro USB port. Next we can plug in the other end of the OTG cable that has the male micro USB connector into the Fire TV and that should look like this when you're done. Now plug the Fire TV stick back into your TV and power it up. Once it boots back up, you're on the home screen, go over to settings, go down and click on my Fire TV and then USB drive. You can leave it as external storage but you won't be able to move apps over to it. To do that, you'll need to format it as internal storage by clicking on Format to Internal Storage. Now when you install apps that support external storage including side-loaded apps, they will be added to the USB drive automatically. However, I do want to mention that once you format your USB drive as internal, it will be formatted to only be used with the Fire TV and you won't be able to use it for anything else unless you reformat it. Now later in this video, we have the USB drive formatted as external for storing ROMs for emulation. If you want to move over apps that you have already installed to internal storage, go back to the USB drive, click Manage Installed Apps, click Show, and select All Applications. You will then see a list of all your apps. Now unfortunately there are quite a few apps like Netflix that don't support external storage and can't be moved. Click on an app and then you'll see an option move to it external. Then you can move it. If you don't see that option, then you can't move it. Once you find an app that supports external storage, click on move to external and the app will be moved over to your USB thumb drive. To check to see if it has been moved, go back to the list of apps and any app that you see that has the USB icon next to it is installed on the USB thumb drive. You can also switch the app back to internal storage at any time. Now that you have more storage to work with, let's move on to sideloading some more apps. Now to be able to sideload apps, the first thing you want to do is go back to settings, My Fire TV, click on developer options, and make sure ADB debugging is turned on. Also, some apps you install might need to install other apps and will need permission to do so. Once installed, you will need to come back here and go to Install Unknown Apps and turn that option on for the app. Next, we need to install an app called Downloader, which you can find in the Amazon App Store. Downloader will allow you to download files from the internet onto your Fire TV devices. So head over to the App Store, find the app, and install it. We already have it installed on our system. Once it's finished installing, open the Downloader app. To navigate the app, you can use the navigation circle and select button at the top of your remote. You can also install the Fire TV app and connect it to your Fire TV and use the remote in the app, which is nice because it brings up a keyboard and makes it easier to type when searching. Click in the URL bar and type a search word or URL address associated with the app you want to install to find the APK. Then click on Go. You can also enter the direct link to the APK and once you click go, it will automatically start downloading. Make sure you're getting APKs from a reputable site. A site that we use is apkmirror.com. We are going to show you how to install AppToy TV as an example. AppToy TV is an app store alternative for Android TV apps. 
Scroll down on the page to find the download link and click to download. Once downloaded, click install at the bottom right. Then hit done. You will then see a prompt that allows you to delete the APK. Since the app is already installed, you no longer need this and deleting it will help save space on your drive. As we mentioned earlier, some apps will need permission to install other apps like AppToy TV. So let's head back over to developer options and turn that option on for the app. Then go to apps and channels and you will see that the app is now installed. Click it to launch the app and you're in. Make sure you hit allow when this prompt pops up so that the app works properly. There is also an app available on Android phones called Apps to Fire that lets you sideload apps as well. However, in our experience it didn't really work, so we stuck with the downloader app method but you can give it a shot and see if it works for you. We will leave a link to the instructions on how to use the app in the description below. So now let's check out some emulation on the Fire TV Stick 4K Max. So we set up RetroArts to play NES, SNES, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, and Dreamcast. Now we're not going over the setup of RetroArts here. There are plenty of videos out there to show you how to set up RetroArch on the Fire TV and Android. So we're not covering that here. We just wanted to show you guys some of the performance of uh, this emulation running on the Fire TV Stick and what kind of performance that you can expect to get out of this system uh, running these emulators. So first up we have NES and we're using the Quick NES Core here and here I'm running RC Pro-Am and these types of systems aren't going to really be a problem for this uh, Fire Stick and we see we're at like 60 frames per second and I'm kind of coming in last place here but I was really good at this game once upon a time. But here's this kind of performance you can expect uh, running Nintendo emulation on the Fire TV Stick 4K Max. Pretty good, pretty smooth. Now we have Super Mario Bros. 3. Now we did notice a little input lag with our Bluetooth controller, so you might have to adjust for that. Or maybe something that you might not be able to get around with your timings, but um, it was serviceable. So here we got Super Mario Bros. 3. I got hit there. Uh, don't judge me on this gameplay. It's a little bit rusty. So, you know, it's running smooth. Again, minus the input lag of the Bluetooth controller. And next up, we have some Super Nintendo emulation. We have Turtles in Time here, and we're using the SNES 9X 2005 core. And this isn't so sensitive to timing, so uh, the gameplay was pretty responsive. I was able to. Uh, get through this level without any problems and it is running pretty smooth once again you see it's running at a 60 frame per second as you can see in the top right there and next up we have Super Metroid also running at 60 frames per second it's running pretty smooth looks pretty good and put like once again not too much of a problem so just uh, show you guys some of this gameplay or bad gameplay. Next up we have uh, Diddy Kong Racing, one of Michelle's all-time favorite. And this is down to 20 frames per second here. This original game was 30 frames per second, I believe. So Nintendo 64 emulation. Uh, it's a little bit tougher on the system and we are using the parallel 64 core to run this And you see what kind of performance now we're sneaking up on 30. We're around like 28 But this is pushing the system a little bit harder now here. We have Super Mario World 64 Close to 30 frames per second. This is running a little bit better than Diddy Kong so this is the kind of performance you can expect to get out of this little fire stick. You know, it's really nice that you can, you know, add this extra functionality and get some gameplay in. 
beyond just uh, streaming the uh, typical streaming apps, apps like Netflix and what have you. Now onto some PlayStation 1 emulation. This is the PCSX Rearm Core and we're running Crash Bandicoot. And it's running pretty smooth. As you can see, the frames per second, top right, 60 frames per second. Running pretty smooth, looks pretty good, sounded good. This is a classic right here. Next up we have some Dreamcast emulation and we're using the Flycast Core. We have Crazy Taxi and see we're not quite hitting 60 frames per second. Down around, you know, 40, 45, but it's still very playable. Just not, we're just not getting 60 here. But, you know, it's still it's not unplayable. And this is a very fun game if you guys never played it. It's pretty, pretty cool. Drive around in a taxi picking people up and dropping them off at the checkpoint before the time runs out. So now we have Marvel vs. Capcom and you see we're hitting close to the 60 frames per second, 60 frames per second just about. So this is uh, you know running pretty smoothly here on the Fire TV Stick 4K Max. And one of my all time uh, favorite games here because I like the Marvel characters and the Capcom characters and that's running pretty smooth. So that's going to do it for this one guys. We wanted to show you how you can get some additional functionality and to show the emulation performance you can expect on the Fire TV Stick 4K Max. So we hope you like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps our channel grow and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!